The state of healthcare in Syria is in an emergency. Um, we're being catapulted to the dark ages. Um, we're not, we don't have any anesthetics to give to make surgeries. There's no antibiotics to treat simple infections. Women are having to deliver their children on, uh, you know, kitchen floor with any medic without any medical assistance. And this is not just inside eastern Aleppo. This is across the entire country because, of course, there's been a systematic targeting of healthcare and doctors as a weapon of war. I think that's a really important point to bring out that this has been a premeditated um, attack on doctors and healthcare um, that is now not just affecting the 11 million people who are in need of um, critical healthcare, but actually is making us a very, you know, a great exporter of disease now to the rest of the world. I mean, it is utterly depressing that in the 21st century, a situation like this can occur in which the United Nations appears to be powerless. I mean, what do you want them to do? Right, absolutely. I mean, I thought we all agreed on a few basic things, right? You don't bomb hospitals and you don't kill children, but it seems that not all of what, not all of us are on the same page. I mean, the United Nations, I know, have been working hard to try and get humanitarian access, um, but I think it's not enough now that we've just been asking nicely for this. Um, there needs to be a mechanism put in place in order to say this is an absolute must. We need a humanitarian corridor. In effect, you, you, it seems that you and other doctors involved in this have kind of given up East Aleppo and that, as Parikh Brown said, we seem to be talking about an end game. And you are seeking to establish a new hospital mm -hmm. outside this area of conflict. Mm -hmm. to, to be honest with you, I think what, like a couple of weekends ago when all of the remaining hospitals were bombed, the information I was getting from people was that we were all feeling so helpless um, and powerless to do anything and it was time to do a big, bold, direct action to change that and hence launching the People's Convoy campaign which is launching on the same uh, on that website as of tomorrow. And, and really it's about a practical and a symbolic act. We are wanting to build, we're partnering with doctors and nurses in Syria to build an entire children's hospital in North Aleppo. So every single penny that goes will go towards that. Um, and we will This take, will be a sort of pre prefabricated structure? And so there is a building that we're rehabilitating uh -huh. in, in Aleppo, and the money that we're raising via crowdfunds will be, um, will buy equipment and we will be physically taking it on the convoy that leaves on Saturday the 17th um, to go and deliver it to our Syrian partners. But more than that, it's an act of symbolism this is about all of us saying, we salute your bravery, we hear you, we see you, we are coming in support, we do not accept the status quo, um, and we're there to support. Uh, Dr. Hallam, thank you very much for coming in, and your organisation is called Can Do, right? It is. Thanks very much, Krishna. Thank you. Now, the German Chancellor,